The case of the bodega clerk charged with murder in the stabbing death of an ex-con who attacked him behind the counter is generating more controversy tonight for Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. A bipartisan group of city council members is demanding the case be dropped and for the second day in a row, Mayor Adams is expressing support for the store clerk. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer spoke with Brian Wagner, a former Brooklyn prosecutor who's now a criminal defense attorney. She spoke with him about the bodega murder. We want to talk about um, the case involving the bodega clerk who was arrested and charged with murder, even though it, it was self-defense. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could walk me through, um, you know, how, it, it, how difficult or easy it's going to be for the district attorney to make a murder case against this man. With a murder case, self-defense, there's three elements that a prosecutor must disprove. And the way they have to disprove it is, first, the defense needs to suggest that it's possible. Usually that's done by a defendant testifying. First element is that the defendant subjectively, him or herself, truly believed that they were in imminent, meaning immediate, danger of being killed. Second element is that a reasonable person objectively would also share that same belief that the defendant had. Third element, since it's a deadly physical force, that they were about to have deadly physical force used against them. That's important because if you push me, I can't shoot you. It has to be proportionate. So in this case, somebody came behind the counter, confronted him, and he stabbed him. Yeah. So, so I've watched. So as a prosecutor, what do you have to do to prove the case? Or will it be, let me ask you this, will it be difficult for the district attorney to make that case before the grand jury? So before the grand jury, no. Easy to get an indictment. Whether or not you could prove it beyond a reasonable doubt at trial is a whole nother ball game. So the things that I would be concerned about as the prosecutor are, did this bodega owner, Mr. Alba, really think he was going to be killed and would a reasonable person think he was going to be killed? The video is really going to be the entire case. And the issue with the video is the person that comes behind the counter grabs the bodega owner by the collar like this. At that point, you see Mr. Alba stab the, the guy in the neck. The issue for this case will come down to, was that proportionate? And would a reasonable person, not Mr. Alba, but a, a general person, think he had to use deadly physical force? So put on your prosecutor's hat and then put on your defense attorney's hat. As a prosecutor's hat, when you saw that video, what would you think? As a prosecutor's hat, the use of deadly physical force was not proportionate. I didn't see why Mr. Alba thought he was about to be killed or deadly physical force was going to be used against him. Now, as you said, switch on my defense attorney hat. And Mr. Alba's attorney has said that off camera, the, the person that came beyond the counter, his girlfriend showed a knife and that that's why deadly physical force was needed. Again, it'll come down to does video surveillance show that? And whether or not a jury believes that deadly physical force was needed because a knife off camera was shown. So as a legal analyst, now you're wearing a third hat. Um, is it an easy case to make, a difficult case to make? Would you down, if you were the prosecutor, would you downgrade the charges? So that's, that's the question that every good prosecutor needs to ask is what is fair for the defendant, what's fair to the victim, and what's fair in this case to Manhattan in, in all. Let's assume Mr. Alba is a law-abiding man and that he has no previous criminal history. He doesn't deserve a long jail sentence. He doesn't deserve any jail, even though what happened is tragic. I would downgrade the charges. I would have him plead to some assault, and whether it's probation or something of that ilk, I don't think society is bettered this man going to jail. So there's also a political element now 
because the mayor has taken his side and so have a number of politicians, including the Republican candidate for governor. I mean, but the mayor, I think, is the main one where he has said that a hardworking um, New Yorker shouldn't be punished for self-defense. Yeah. And in a vacuum, that's true. But you're still bound by the laws and whether or not this self-defense was proportionate and legal is a question that, again, a good prosecutor should decide without looking into the politics of it. Whether or not that happens, you know, I'm not confident that will happen, but in an ideal world, that's what should happen. So if forget it, so let's put the mayor aside for a second and the political um, ramifications aside. Do you have a feeling that um, as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney that this case should be downgraded? I do. What I would probably do if I was the homicide prosecutors, I would indict the case. And after it was indicted, I would get a plea bargain that required no jail, but some sort of admitting guilt to a much lesser offense. Would you indict on murder too? That is the difficult question. And honestly, I don't know. I would review all the other video evidence. And if there was any video of someone else holding a knife, absolutely not. Absent that, I probably would. So um, as it stands now, the grand jury has to consider this case. Do you think the grand jury will have trouble indicting or no? I don't. There's the age old expression, you can indict a ham sandwich. I was the one who did that story with Michelle Wackler, so I know it really well. Yeah, and really, the reason why, as I explained to my clients, the grand jury doesn't decide guilt or innocence. That's not their job. Their job is just to decide, hey, is there enough to accuse you of this crime? And when you put it in that context, it's such a low bar that any decent prosecutor should be able to convince a grand jury that that's what their obligation is. The question is, what, are you, what charge you, are you indicting them on? Yeah, and again, without video, let me rephrase that. If there's video that shows another person holding a knife, I'm not charging murder. If there's video that does not show any other knife and just Mr. Alva holding a knife, I'm indicting on murder, but with the caveat that I hope to get to a resolution on the case. So this is far from over. I think so. I think this is the type of case that unless political waves require it to get resolved quickly, will drag on for a long time. Because in the end, Mr. Alba is going to need to make a difficult decision. Do I fight for my freedom or do I accept small amounts of responsibility? And I guess we won't know until we see what the DA does. Absolutely. Will he have to testify? He will never have to testify except normally to get a self-defense charge because it requires both an objective or a reasonable person and a subjective did this specific defendant feel it at trial he most likely would have to testify to get a self-defense charge to the jury